Okay, I'm just going to go over the practice final exam uh, and go through that. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and uh, let's uh, make this happen. Um, so this is the practice final exam. This is actually a previous exam. First thing that you're going to do is you're going to download the data set. Um, and this, it says data set for the final exam, but really that's the data set for the practice final exam. Maybe I should change the name of that. Um, and so one of the reasons why I am not using this any longer is because it's all about uh, Corona. And frankly, nobody wants to deal with Corona. So um, I don't use that anymore. Um, I made a new final exam. So um, for your exam, you're going to have uh, different data sets um, and uh, just be aware of that. And yours is probably gonna look a little bit different. Um, so yeah, uh, first things first, let's take a look at the first uh, question. Also uh, on your exam, uh, there will be some vocab questions as well. Uh, for the vocab questions, it's going to be like basic vocab from throughout the semester. Um, it wouldn't be bad to have your uh, your formula sheets up um, and anything else that you're able to quickly access the vocab. Uh, it's not supposed to be terribly difficult, but at the same time, I've watched other people do it um, in the recordings and whatnot. And uh, because it's been a little while since you guys have worked on it, even though it's really important stuff that you know you guys have been doing throughout the semester and you spent a long time on it, um, it uh, may not come back to you quite as easily as what I originally thought. Uh, so just have those formula sheets ready and, you know, maybe those Excel workbooks ready uh, for you to be able to look back at the vocab when you need them. Question two. So we've got question two right here. Uh, which yours is not necessarily set up the same way for your exam, just letting you know. Uh, it is for the practice exam, just not for your actual exam. It's set up with just different data sets and you got to figure out which data set to use. Uh, so uh, question two, uh, the left column are the smaller countries. So these are countries, this right here is countries with population under 10 million. This is countries with population above 10 million. And this is the percent of each country's population with confirmed cases by country. So it is believed that countries with less than 10 million residents have a higher average uh, percent of uh, population with co confirmed corona cases compared to the countries with greater than 10,000. Below is the information on all countries' corona cases and current uh, percent of the country's population that has ever contracted the coronavirus. With an alpha of 0.01, can we determine that countries with less than 10 million residents have a higher percent of residents with confirmed cases of corona? So what is it that we're doing? We are comparing the uh, percent of individuals uh, or the average of the percent of individuals uh, who have uh, contracted the coronavirus uh, per country with uh, populations under 10 million compared to populations over 10 million. Okay. And so uh, right now we already know that the dependent variable is uh, the percent of individuals who have contracted the con coronavirus. Okay. Uh, so, or confirmed cases or percent of confirmed cases. Independent variable is the uh, Technically, it's the country population. So the country population, it's dependent. The percent of uh, individuals with confirmed cases is dependent on the size of the country. Okay, what are you examining or comparing? We are comparing the mean of two independent samples. This is an independent sample, and this is an independent sample. Uh, these are not paired. These, these two right here have nothing to do with each other. Therefore, it's not a paired samples test, uh, but rather you've got one independent sample and another independent sample. Okay. Um, next, coming down, the observed dependent variable values independent, and I don't know why that's not working. Uh, it's supposed to say, are they are they independent of each other? The answer is yes. Is the data normally distributed? Well, uh, in order to do this, we're going to highlight this, and we're going to do a data analysis tool. Let's see here, data, data analysis tool. And we are going to do descriptive statistics. Press OK. Uh, input range. Okay. And labels in the first row 
output range. Where do I want this? I'm going to put it right up here. And then I'm going to do summary statistics, confidence level. I'm going to do point, uh, let's see, at 99%. Uh, because um, I think it says, yeah, 0 0.01. So I'm going to do 99%. And I'm going to press OK. So this gives me the mean, the mode, standard deviation. And then very specifically, I want to look at skew and kurtosis. And the answer, is this normally distributed? And this is definitely no. Uh, and the reason why is because this skew and kurtosis is massively huge. Uh, so um, not so reliable as what we would like it to be. OK. Uh, are there any outliers? Uh, so uh, that's a good question. Um, way that we can do that is uh, really quick. We can do insert. Uh, let's do this. Uh, insert. Um, and then the answer is definitely yes. There are definitely outliers because you see all those fun little dots. Those are all outliers. So we're going to come back here and we're going to say, yes, there are outliers. Uh, yes. Uh, do not change the data, but is the interpretability of the data questionable due to violations of this assumption? And the answer is definitely yes. To be straight up honest with you, you really can't trust a single thing that we're about to do, but we're going to run it anyway. Um, and uh, I just want you guys to be really aware of how horrible this data is and how you really can't trust it. Um, it's really bad. Uh, what are the degrees of freedom? Uh, so if it violates the assumption of homogeneity of variances, be sure to account for that before answering. So let's go ahead and run the F test, which I mean, it's already really jacked up. So let's just see how messed up it is. Uh, so let's do home. Uh, let's see data, data analysis. Let's run the F test for two samples. So we're checking to see does the variance of the first one, does it match the variance of the second one? So the variance for countries uh, under 10 million and variance for countries above 10 million, and we're comparing the two of those. And then uh, output range, we are going to go right here, press OK. Uh, oops, I forgot to put that there's labels. Okay, and F test, yes, it definitely, if this p value is less than 0.05, it's saying we violated the assumption of the homogeneity of variances. So, therefore, what we need to do is do data analysis and we need to do a t test assuming unequal variances. And then we are going to do uh, variable one and then variable two. And I'm going really fast. I know I'm going really fast. But the reason why I'm going really fast is because if you want to, you can skip through this. You can watch it over again, slow down, do whatever you want. But I know that a lot of you watch it on one and a half speed anyway. So yeah, you can also write it, run it on half speed. So I'm going to put it right there. And then so we've got the, uh, what's that called? Uh, we've got the degrees of freedom, which is right here. So we've got 158 degrees of freedom. Okay, and uh, which if you run for equal, it's uh, it's going to be different. But 158 degrees of freedom. What's the tail of the test? The tail of the test is below is the information. Um, let's see. Can we determine if countries with less than 10,000 residents have a higher percent of uh, confirmed cases? So population under. So that's going to be an upper tail test. Okay. Uh, what type of test are you conducting? This is an independent samples test because it's two independent samples. Uh, then the null and alternative hypothesis. Uh, we're looking to uh, do two independent samples. And this right here, this needs to be pointing in the upper direction. So we're looking for one where it's two independent samples. Let's see here, right here. OK, this sample, sample one compared to sample two with the alternative pointing in the upper direction. So this is what it is right there. Uh, what is the level of significance? We already said that, 0.01, test statistic. If we know the population standard deviation, do a Z, but we don't, so we're going to do a T. What are the critical values? Great question. So uh, this is how cool this is. It's an upper tail test. And so it says critical one tail right there, 2.35. 2.35. Now, 
uh, let's see here, is it negative 2.35 or positive 2.35? Because it's an upper tail test, it's going to be positive 2.35. If it was a lower tail test, it would be negative 2.35. So 2.35, what is the calculated value of the test statistic? T stat, it's 2.77828. So 2.778, so T stat. What is the probability of observing a sample as extreme as or more extreme than the observed value? given the null hypothesis is true, that's just the p-value right here. So 0 0.003. Okay, what is your decision? So we are the rejecting or failing to reject. If t stat is more extreme than t crit, we are rejecting. Or if this p-value is less than that 0 0.01, we are also rejecting. So we are rejecting the null hypothesis, which is really the only option here that works, rejecting the null hypothesis because the calculated test statistic is more extreme than the critical value. What is the effect size? Really good question. Man, I forget what the formula is. No worries. Open book, open note. I got your back. We're right here. But here's the next frustrating part. I'm going to just copy and paste this, put it right here, and you're missing something. You do not have the pooled standard deviation. Normally, it should be right in here, but there's a problem. And the reason why you don't have the pooled standard deviation is because you need to run one more test. T-test, two samples assuming equal variances. Dum -da -da -dum. We're going to come right over here, and we are going to sample one. Sample two, and we've got labels, uh, alpha 0.01, uh, and then I'm going to put it uh, over here, press OK. And right here, we have this fun little thing called the pooled variance. The pooled variance. Now, the pooled variance isn't going to help us right now because the pooled uh, what we need is the pooled standard deviation. Well, what do you what do you need in order to get the pooled standard deviation? All that you've got to do is take the square root, the square root of the pooled variance. So we're going to come over here to the pooled variance, and we're going to do equals square root. Okay, and so this right here is the pooled standard deviation. So I'm going to put that right there, pooled standard deviation. And we need to do the mean one minus mean two divided by the pooled standard deviation. So what is mean one? Uh, wonderful, it's right here. So let's do this. So equals mean one minus mean two. And make sure that you put parentheses around that. OK. And then we are going to do divided by pooled standard deviation. So that's going to be 0.3565. So that right there is the effect size. So it's a small to medium effect size. A small to medium effect size, 3.57. OK. What can you say oh, that's interpreted, which just look right down here. The difference of dun, 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 dun. OK. So uh, we know that we are rejecting the null hypothesis. So in other words, whatever the difference is, it's too large to have occurred by chance. OK, so the difference of blank between uh, small and large countries is too large to have occurred by chance. The probability of this occurring randomly, uh, there is no difference, randomly assuming there is no difference between the percent of viruses in small and large countries is about 0.6%. Uh, OK, uh, so let's see here. Uh, the probability, it's, uh, it's a one tail, it should be 3%. Okay is too large. OK, so this one right here, see, this one is not large enough. So that's wrong. So the difference between small and large countries is too large to have occurred by chance. The probability of this uh, occurring, assuming there's no uh, difference between large and small countries, is about 3%. So this is, uh, and then the difference is somewhat noticeable, but a medium or larger sample size allows us to see the difference more. So this is the correct one. This one is really close, but this is for a two-tailed test. This one right here is for a one-tailed test. And the reason why I say that is because you notice how this is doubled uh, compared to this. That means that it's a two-tailed test. OK, so we are going to do three. And then move on. Next, we've got uh, question three. We're going to go to question three. Uh, the president would like to know uh, 
if the United States percent of the population with the virus is lower day by day compared to other countries since the first confirmed case in each country below is the information of the United States percent of the population with corona paired with the average of all countries uh, confirmed uh, cases in the corona day uh, for the first 103 days having confirmed cases. So in other words, uh, the total nation national percentage of confirmed cases in the United States on the very first day. So you've got the very first day. So it's the United States compared to all other countries paired on day. So United States, all other countries, United States, uh, day two, day three, day four, day five. Okay. Um, and every subsequent day after that, the U.S. is paired with the average percentage of all other countries. Compared the difference day by day with a 1% chance. Wow, I just used 1% over and over again, didn't I? Uh, chance of saying the United States uh, is lower, has a lower percentage of infected residents than other countries, but really does not. If the president, uh, is the president able to tell the nation the United States has a lower day by day percentage since the first confirmed case compared to other countries? Okay. So first of all, what is the dependent variable? Okay. The dependent variable is, dun, 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 is the percent of confirmed cases, because you've got the percent of confirmed cases here, percent of confirmed cases here. And what is it dependent on? It's dependent on the country, the United States versus all other countries. Um, and then it, what type of data is the independent? That right there is going to be, nope qualitative categories because you've got this qualitative category compared to this qualitative category uh what are you examining or comparing the mean difference uh let's see here the mean of two independent samples no the the mean of the individual difference score between the usa and the average of all the countries this is what it is so it's the mean of the differences so we've got a, each one of these gives us a difference score and we're going to get the mean of the differences okay next what are the degrees of freedom Okay, so here's what we got to do. We're going to run the data analysis tool, and we are going to do the paired samples t-test. Paired two samples for, for the mean. Press OK. Variable one. Okay, and variable two. Uh, label oh, and point oh one. Output range, press okie dokie. There, there was no okie dokie, it just says, okay. Uh, anyway, sorry, I'm, I'm in a weird mood today. Degrees of freedom is 102. Okay, so we're gonna come down to 102. What is the tail of the test? Tail of the test, uh, we wanna know, is it lower? Is that what it says? Yes, lower day by day. So it's going to be a lower tail test. So the United States is believed to be lower than this. So it's going to be lower. Okay, what type of test are you conducting? This is a paired sample because each one of these is paired on the day, paired on the day, paired sample. Uh, are the different scores normally distributed? Really good question. Uh, what should we do in order to find out? Data, data analysis tool, and let's do descriptive statistics, okie dokie. And then we are going to do delete and highlight all this. And then we got labels in the first row, output range. We're gonna go right there. Okay, and the different scores. Different scores normally distributed. So this right here is the United States. And then uh, we have, oh, you know what? We don't, we, we've, we've got to do this really quick. So we've got to equals this minus this. We've got to get the distribution of the different scores. So I just uh, did this and we got to run the descriptive statistics again. So we've got different scores. So what I did is I subtracted all countries from the United States day by day. And this is the difference score day by day uh, until the uh, until the end. So let's do data analysis tool. Let's run this again. We're just gonna change this to D and then press okay. And then press okay. And coming down to here, 
we've got skewness and kurtosis. And because kurtosis is less than three and skewness is uh, less than one, we're gonna say that it is normally distributed, okay? So those are the thresholds that I care about. Is this data normally distributed? Yes. This is less than three, less than one. And if you wanted to, you could do a fun little, uh, let's see what this does. Data insert. Uh, it's not lining up the way that I want it to, but it's normally distributed enough that it's not skewed left or right. Um, and, uh, you know, it's definitely not perfect data, uh, but it's good enough for us to be able to continue. Okay. Do the different scores have any outliers? Uh, good question. My guess is no, but uh, let's, uh, to be really honest, I don't know. No, it does not have any outliers. So you can see uh, right here, we just did the uh, chart for the entire different score. The way that I did that is I just highlighted all of them. Uh, I highlighted the entire row of different scores and then I did insert. And then I said, give me a box and whisker. And that'll tell me if I have outliers. If I have outliers, it's gonna have dots on the outside. So the answer is no. Uh, do not change the data, but is the interpretability of the data questionable due to any violations? Uh, no, it's fine. Uh, when we interpret this data, it'll be good. And then the null and alternative hypothesis. Well, because this is a paired samples t-test, we are looking for something where we're, compl we're comparing the mean of the different scores. So it's going to be either this one, this one, or this one. So uh, is this an upper tail or a lower tail test or a two tail? Uh, this right here, uh, remember it is a lower. So we're looking for something where the alternative hypothesis is pointed in the lower direction. And so we're going to do the mean of the different scores is less than zero. That's what we're looking for right there. The mean of the different scores is less than zero, which is a paired sample lower tail test. Okay. What is the level of significance? We already determined is 0.01. Uh, what is the test statistic? It's going to be T because we don't know the population standard deviation. What are the critical values? Uh, so this right here, we're going to come, let's see here, for the paired sample. Okay, and it says T critical for two tail, T critical for one tail. Now, really important here, this is a one tail lower tail test. So this 2.36 dot, 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 it's going to be a negative 2.36. So we're going to come over here. We're going to do negative 2.36 right down here. This is a lower tail test. What is a calculated value of the test statistic? So we've got the uh, 3.95. Uh, let's see here. Probability of, oh, sorry. Uh, oh, here we go. Negative, <laughs> I, I almost did something completely different. All right, negative 11.36. So negative 11.36. So that's a calculated value, T stat right there. Compared to T crit, which is this, this is actually negative, but the computer doesn't know whether or not you're doing a lower or upper. So they just give you the positive and you can choose whether or not you wanna do a lower or upper. Next, what is the probability of observing a sample value as extreme as or more extreme than what you got? Uh, and so the answer is P is less than 0 0.001. Uh, and this right here, this 3.95 uh, times 10 to the negative 20th is what that is. What that means is that there's 20 zeros in front of this three, uh, actually put a decimal and then 19 zeros, uh, and then that three nine. So uh, less than 0 0.001. So we're gonna reject the null hypothesis because the calculated test statistic is more extreme than the critical value. Um, and then the effect size, once again, oh no, I forget how to calculate the effect size. Come right over here, go to paired samples. And then what we do is we take the mean of the different score divided by the standard deviation of the different score. Okay, the mean of the different score uh, divided by the standard deviation of the different score. So let's see here, we're gonna move this over here. We're gonna do uh, equals the mean of the different score divided by the standard deviation. Let's see here, square root. You see how it gives you the variance? We need the square root of the variance because that gives us the standard deviation, which gives you 0.63133. Uh, so we're gonna come right over here and we're gonna do 0.63. What's going on there? 
I guess it doesn't like me. Did I mess something up? Watch. What is the effect size? Uh, the effect size should be, let's just do this really quick, make sure, equals average. Okay. Um, and then equals standard deviation of the sample. Okay, then we're going to do equals divided by, that's a completely different answer. I don't know why. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not entirely sure why that is what it is. Um, makes me, makes me question life a little bit. Um, because the the mean of the difference score is uh, this right here, but it says the mean of the difference score uh, is something slightly different. So the, the actual effect size is uh, going to be 1.12. And the reason why it's 1.12 is the effect size always has to be positive. Um, then what would you say uh, about what can be interpreted from these results? Um, and look down here. Um, the difference uh, between is too large to have occurred by chance. Uh, the probability of this occurring randomly, assuming uh, there is no difference between the, the small and large, is almost zero. Uh, the difference is very noticeable, even with a small sample size. So that seems true. Uh, okay. Uh, the average difference of this is not large enough, so that's not true. The difference of uh, is too large to have occurred by chance. The probability of this occurring randomly, assuming there is no difference between the two is about 3.3%. Uh, and I can see how I uh, would have messed with you guys a little bit because it almost looks like that. But the reason why is it's times 10 to the negative 20th. And so the correct answer, the, and then in this one, there's not enough information. There's definitely enough information. So I'm going to say, is very noticeable, yep, number one. Okay, next, um, if you look at just the past 10 days from 94 until 103, what can you tell me about the comparison of the percent? So pay, uh, compare 94 to 103, and you'll look 94 to 103, and uh, it's virtually identical. So what we're going to say, uh, the difference, there is virtually no difference between the USA and all other countries. You notice that these different scores are zero, like they're virtually identical. Uh, so between 94, day 94 and 103, the percent of individuals uh, infected in the United States compared to the uh, average in the world from day 94 to 103 is, is virtually identical. Last but not least, uh, we are going to go on to question number four. It is believed the number of corona cases is related to the size of the population in each country. Below are five countries. Um, with the greatest number of confirmed cases, compare the frequency of cases between these five countries with 5% chance of type one error. Are the number of confirmed cases in each country consistent with the proportion, are consistent with the proportion of the population of these five countries? Now, if I were to say equally proportionate, I would say, I would wonder, are these all the same? Or are these equal? But I don't say that. I say, are they equal, equally, or are they proportionate to their population size? Okay, and so what I have here, is I have uh, the population uh, or the total number of observed cases, and then I've got the population. Um, and so I was really nice and I put this in here for you guys, but if on your actual exam, uh, you're going to have to go and actually copy and paste this chart in there and do it all by hand. Uh, but we're going to do, uh, we're going to find the expected number. So the expected number is going to be equals for the United States, uh, the proportion of the United States, the relative frequency of the United States population compared to all populations, multiplied by the total number of uh, observed, uh, yeah, the total number of observed cases. So this is the expected based on the population. So we're just going to drag this down. 
And so all of these are the expected uh, for Spain based on the population, expected for Italy based on the population, expected for the UK uh, based on the population, expected for Germany based on the population. And just to make sure we're gonna do equal sum and we're going to add all these together. And we wanna make sure that these are the same, which they are. Next, we're gonna do equals frequency observed minus frequency expected. And uh, so we're going to drag this down just follow this along and then we're going to square it equals the difference squared okay and then after we're going to drag that down then we're going to do equals the difference squared divided by the expected frequency okay and then we're going to drag this down and then we're going to do equals sum and that gives us our chi squared value Great. Um, that's the chi-squared value. Um, and so the one thing that you can do is equals chi-squared dot uh, dis dot right tail and put the chi-squared value in right there. And then the degrees of freedom is going to be one, two, three, four, five. It's going to be four because it's the number of categories minus one. And it's going to tell you the probability of this occurring is virtually zero. Great. Uh, so now the percent of chi squared. Uh, so in other words, the probability is like none. Percent of chi squared is going to be equals that uh, the contribution to chi squared divided by chi squared. Um, and uh, then you're going to drag it down. So what I did there is I did uh, F4. When you press F4, it changes and makes it an absolute value. There we go. And then I made it into an absolute value and draped down. The only ones that I care about interpreting are the ones that are above 10%. So there's only two that are above 10%. So these two right here contribute more than 10% to chi squared. This one contributes 37, Spain contributes 37%, and Germany uh, contributes 49%. Uh, the bigger question is, is what is the difference from what's expected? So we're going to do equals the uh, the frequency observed uh, minus the frequency expected. Um, and then we are going to uh, divide that uh, by the actual, uh, hold on, give me one second. Uh, let's pull this up. I'm just going to, yep. So let's go to the, dum, 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 dum. okay. So once again, copy and paste all of this into yours. Then you'll notice frequency observed minus frequency expected divided by frequency expected. So we're gonna delete all this. Make sure you delete all this because you don't wanna accidentally get stuck with a formula that's not working. So frequency observed minus frequency expected equals frequency observed minus frequency expected divided by frequency expected. And this tells us that uh, the, uh, the expected number of cases uh, is, um, let's see here, the total number of observed cases is 38.9% less than what's expected. So the total number observed, observed is 38.9% less than what's expected. And then we're gonna do the same thing, or we can just control C. And this is 45%, 45.5% above what was expected. Okay, so based on the population size, uh, based on the population size of the country, Spain had 45.5% more than what was expected. And Germany had 38.9% uh, less than what was expected. So let's go through and answer all these questions now that we have all this data analyzed. What is the dependent variable? Well, the dependent variable is uh, the number of observed cases, okay? Independent variable is uh, the country, population count, let's see here. Yeah, just the country. Um, what, uh, what type of data is the independent variable? Uh, the independent variable is, uh, you've got these, uh, 
qualitative categories. Let's see here. Okay. Uh, what are you examining or comparing? You're examining the frequency between the proportion of observations between countries compared to the distribution of expected of proportion frequency. So it's there, you're not expecting them to be equal because you're expecting them to match a different proportion. Uh, once again, I don't know why. Are they uh, independent? Yes. Are the what's the degrees of freedom? Degrees of freedom is the total number of categories minus one. So it's five minus one, which is four. Uh, what is the tail of the test? A chi-squared is always an upper tail test. What type of test are you conducting? We are doing a, uh, a chi-squared test for independence, or in other words, an unequal chi-squared. Um, and then the uh, null and alternative hypothesis, the proportion of the coronavirus diagnosis by country reflects the population proportion between countries. The proportion of coronavirus diagnosis by country does not reflect the population between countries. Um, and then the other option is, is there's no difference in proportion. So this would be if you're expecting uh, equal, this is unequal. Uh, so we're going to do that one right there. What is the level of significance? What did we say? 5% uh, chance. So we're going to do 0.05. Test statistic is chi squared. Critical value, uh, really good question. Uh, so in order to determine the critical value, we're going to do equals chi squared dot uh, dist um, or dot inverse dot right tail. And then the probability is 0.05. Uh, degrees of freedom is four. And so that gives us a, so once again, that's chi squared dot inverse dot right tail. You put your alpha value in there, your degrees of freedom in there, and it gives you 9.487. Okay. What is the calculated value of the test statistic? Uh, we got that all the way up here, 81,000 dot, 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 dot. Okay. What is the probability of observing a sample as extreme as or more extreme? Uh, zero. Uh, remember, it's right here, it's zero. Uh, what is your decision? Reject the null hypothesis. Once again, you don't even have to look any further because reject the null hypothesis because the calculated test statistic is more extreme than the critical value. What is the effect size? So if you go to um, the da, 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 final project completed, we're going to, we've got the effect size calculation right there. Let's calculate this effect size. We're going to do uh, equals square root uh, and we're going to do the chi squared divided by uh, the number of observations uh, multiplied by the degrees of freedom, which is four. And that's going to give us the effect size of 0 0.10. 0 0.10. And for four, 0.10 is uh, going to be a small to medium effect size. Small to medium effect size, so 0.1047. Um, and then what can you say your interpretation is about the results? The results indicate the number of coronavirus is proportionate to the size of the country. So that's not true. The results indicate that the number of corona cases per country is not proportionate. That is true. Assuming that it is, the probability is virtually zero. Uh, the ability to observe the differences would require a large sample size as the difference from being proportionate is not very noticeable. That is true. It appears as though Spain and Germany and the UK cases are generally proportionate to the population size. That is also true. Well, Spain, nope, not Spain, Germany and the UK. Nope, so Germany and Spain are not. Um, so that's a problem. But Italy has 45% more. Uh, so Let's see here. The results indicate that the number of corona cases per country is not necessarily proportionate to the country size. Assuming that, that it is, the probability is virtually zero. The ability of observing this difference would require a larger sample size. Um, it appears as though the United States and Italy and the UK are generally proportioned. That is true, but Spain has 45% more cases. That is true. And Germany had about 39 fewer cases. That is true. So four. And bada bing, bada boom, we are good. Uh, and I got to go coach my son's baseball team. Uh, so sorry for this being so fast and rushed, but I uh, wanted to get this guys, uh, out to you guys. Uh, so yeah.